Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the live stream. Guys, we, I don't know if we remember how to do this. We got more cameras, more people. This feels like a little bit more of a, a built out Let's Go Elk stream. So we're glad you're joining us tonight. We've got a, a lot of crew because we've got them all on one court for one game. So with me tonight, join Mr. Cass Pond on the stats and on the technical aspects of the basketball game, keeping me honest. We've got Mr. Steven Pena right behind. He'll be on the microphone as well. We've got Ryan on camera one. We got Dan the Truth Man somewhere. He's going to be on a floor camera for us. Mr. Ethan Holiday is going to video produce for us. He's just out of shot. So thanks for joining us. Guys, take a second, hit that subscribe button. If you're on YouTube, rotate your phone, hit that red button just like it's showing right now, and then switch it back to full screen. We're on Facebook tonight as well. We'll try to check those comments. So say hi. Let us know where you're watching from, whether you're enjoying yourself or not. Love the shout outs. Cass, how you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Excited to be a part of this in the first round of the playoffs, state playoffs, and see how far our Lady Elks go. Hopefully they can they can pull things together and really, really go far in the tournament. I love it. And the, so they're playing the Marinci Wildcats tonight. In full disclosure, I was a Wildcat from third to fifth grade, and I made the, it's not a mistake, but I said that during a football game, and the cheerleaders started chanting, once a cat, always a cat. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I lived in Marinci for, for a few years, and... If the the winner of this game will go on to play the winner of St. John's and why am I spacing who they're playing tonight? St. John's, I believe it's Santan Charter or something like that. And winner of that game, they will play, High Seed will play at that location on Saturday at 7 p.m. So hypothetically, we win, St. John's wins, we would go to St. John's. Hypothetically, we win and Santan Charter wins, they would come to us because of seeding. So... We'll see how tonight shakes out. I think they're going to go live at 632. So maybe we'll jump on Legacy Teen Productions and look a little bit of that stream and give you a halftime update. Um, Pre-game show brought to you by LaSuir Advanced Automotive. Great to have Aaron and his crew back with us sponsoring the pregame. Huge thanks to them. Right, right there. That's how that works. We just had to have some stuff done to one of our vehicles. And Aaron, as always, took care of us real nice. So... Go see them right there on Main Street, just across the street from the O'Reilly's that's being built here in Eager. Correct. So, guys, I'm going to run down. The girls asked me if I would call them out tonight. So I'm going to run down. I'm going to leave you in the capable hands of Steven. What do we got? I got the rest. Oh, you got the other numbers. Good. So we'll fill Cass in. Um, as soon as I get back, I'll try to get you rosters on the Facebook page. I'm going to hand to Ethan my headset so you guys can have a little bit more of the pregame goodness. Um Stephen, if you want to fill us in on how things have went against Marinci earlier in this season, how St. John's is looking, and we'll kind of kind of start chatting things up that way. I'm going to go down and bring the ladies onto the court here in about six minutes. Guys, we are less than 10 minutes away from Let's Go Elks Basketball here in the Dome. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget, like, comment, hit that subscribe button on the YouTubes. Like us on Facebook. Join us on Twitch at Zero Luck Live. It helps us out. We're trying to get to the next level of goodness you have. with the YouTubes. All right, Mr. Holiday, here you go. And Dry Valley Marinci played twice this year. Um, Thanks, it Wes. It's been a real competitive game so far. It's been uh, um, Dry Valley's won fairly convincingly the last two times we've played them. Um, if we play like we should, things should come out the same way thing that's crazy is if we end up playing St. John's in the next round, those have been two, those, both those games have been two point games. That's been a crazy tough, uh, that's a crazy tough second round if that's what we get. But Marancy has shown some flashes as we played them this year. I, they've got some talent, you know, uh, last game was close at half and we opened it up a little bit in the second half. So we've got to play a full game or else uh, they can pull an upset. Right, and that's one of the things about about this. Uh, Marinci played in a play-in game coming into this. So they have one game in this. Kind of, It's a play-in game. It's kind of part of the state playoffs. But they have one game going into it. And so they, they kind of can come out with that experience. And, and one of the things through basketball that's very well known is like the state playoff jitters yes. and as you go in because at this point it's one and done you win you continue on in the playoffs if you lose your season's over yeah that that makes it tough you know because they've played like you said they they're 
we're a little bit cold, so to speak. It's been a longer since we've played a real game. You know, they're, they played a game Friday night or Saturday night, and so they've got they're in that rhythm of game, still playing games. So we've got to have a strong first quarter, you know, to get what you want to do, come out strong early and get those jitters out and just start playing basketball, not worrying about everything else. Correct. And you know, and, and it's also interesting because this is the third time that you're playing them. And so as the season goes, it's interesting to know the more times you play them, how you make adjustments and how things happen. Yes. Those of you that are familiar or watch the NBA or, or watch college basketball, what you'll see is a lot of times they'll, they'll play one game and maybe one team will blow out the other and then they play again a little closer and then they play again and the other team made adjustments and did something to really change the effects of the game and change matchups and different things like that so that you know the uh, so that they have a, have a chance so to speak well and they always say you know the loser has the advantage in the adjustment game because they know something went wrong and something needs to change correct no. whereas when you win it's like oh well we can just keep doing what we're doing right the other thing that's difficult when you're dealing with high school athletes it's hard as a coach to convince them you got to come out, especially if you've beaten a team pretty well. It's hard to convince them that that those past games don't matter. Right. You know, it's hard to convince 15, 16, 17 year olds that not to let down. Right. How to get past that mental aspect? Well, we already beat them easy. It's going to be an easy game. Yeah. You got to. It's hard to get past that sometimes. That's that's exactly right. And. So hopefully, or as we watch the game as it unrolls, we'll see how Round Valley comes out and, and how they're ready and, and see if Marinci made any adjustments. Yeah. Uh, you know, that there are some times that, you know, some coaches just don't quite make the adjustments or, you know, it, as it happens, teams are better than other teams. And, and so it'll be interesting to see how it comes, how, how they play and, and how they operate. Uh, St. John's plays Phoenix Country Day. That's it. Phoenix that's Country not Day. That's an easy game. If I remember right, Phoenix Country Day typically has strong girls program. Okay. Yeah, I, you know, and, and I, I think at this point, for the most part, unless, you know, usually it's kind of like the NCAA bracket. You're 1 and 16, 2 and 15 usually are pretty pretty blowouts. But once you get, up, get closer to the 12 fives, the... the what is it, the 4-11, uh, is that right? 4-11 four, four, so four and yeah. and those and yeah. so forth. Because we're 5. No, 6-11. Six eleven. Six it's 6-11. Eleven. Yeah. 5-12, 4-13s, that's correct. Yeah. So as, as you start getting closer and closer, they get become more and more to where anyone can win. Yeah. Marenzi and their play in game, game play Trivium Prep beat them 55-24. Marenzi was the higher seed. Um, Phoenix Country Day beat Gilbert Classical 47-29. to So those games don't give us a lot to, don't tell us a lot. Um, they went as expected, so. Right. Yeah, the music quit, and it is so quiet in here now. Right. It's almost awkward. But that's one of the great things about it, getting ready. Yep. Teams are getting ready. Coaches are telling them last minute things. They're about to do the announcements. Wes is going to announce the starters. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dome for the first round of 2021 championships. If you would please stand or move your hats or look to the center. We've got the national anthem here.
Looks like they made a change. Kyrie yes. Walker is yep. starting. Yeah. That's we excellent. Put those strong five on the court. There's nothing to lose at this point. So. Yeah. Come out strong. That's a great change in adjustment. Yeah. We'll see how, how that plays and hit if that that contributes to to Round Valley's play in the game. Yeah. The two previous games, uh, we beat Marinsky 52 to 44. The second time, the first time, 61-40 when we played them in Marenzi. Yeah, this is a more, little bit more athletic group, uh, starting five. A uh, little bit more speed in the post. This can be interesting. This can be, and part of that may be uh, Ada Mortensen has been down with uh, strep throat up until uh, yesterday. So okay. she's, she's been out. out Marenzi gets the ball on the tip. Looks like Grand Valley's dropped back to a 2-3 zone. Typically we come out in a man, don't we, Cass? If I remember right, we've been man most of the time. For the most part, yeah. So this might be an adjustment we made to you know, throw them off what they expect. See, see what happens and yeah. see how they deal with it, yeah. yeah. Good patience by the Wildcats so far okay. as they throw 24 three. for three, yeah. that is uh, Marquez for three. That's always a good sign for them if you start out <laughs> hitting your oh. first shot. Turnover. Tried to feed Emma Young underneath. Got a turnover off on the press. Yeah, they come down there swinging the ball well. Round ball is rotating. That, that wing spot is a weakness on, in a 2-3 zone. Yeah. Both their shots have come from that location. Young gets the rebound, gets it to Walker as Round Valley crosses the line for the first time. Haas oh, inside, nice there we go. Yeah. She got the great position in there. Haas got great position as the ball got fed into the into her. Oh, had a steal and we turned it over, give it back to him. Young's gonna pick it up. Overhead pass. Marinci recovers again. Number 10 for Marinci with the ball. That's Aguilar. Got a little bit of sloppiness going on here, not executing your passes. You think some jitters going on, Cass, just oh, trying to work into I, the game? I know it. I mean, and that the state playoffs just produce it. Takes a little bit to get your rhythm and get going. That's a nice little post move by number 10. Looks like she's going to be called for a foul. Number 10, Aguilar, is going to draw the foul. Round Valley with the ball. This is official we've seen quite a bit. I haven't seen him this year as much, but I've seen that, we see that official quite a bit in the past. So. Yep. Both oh. teams are jumping into this press. Scary pass there. Walker brings the ball across half court for the Lady Elks. Walker with it to Bevel. 
Bevel's going to get a traveling call, unfortunately. Did she hop just a little bit on that first step? It's that first step that, that they've been really in looking at a lot this year. And as you saw, she took that little shuffle. Oh, it looks like we got court on the side and we got three girls from Round Valley right there trapping number 14. Nice strong defense there for the Elves. Medina. Not funky Cole Medina, funky old Medina, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. It's what it is. Nice ball movement. That is an ex excellent pass into Haas there for two, two points. Aguilar with the ball. Ball's going to get stripped, though. Walker Pilt. Oh, oh. Marinci picks it back up, but that's going to be a push, oh. I believe, on 20, possibly. Oh, they called it on 10. Aguilar that, again. That's her second. Team Ooh. second. Oh, she's that, got two. That, that's not good when that you have two. That, that surprises me there, but I guess... Oh. oh, over the top. Over the oh. Cash will help me. He have to help me remember. We're set up for instant replay, so we can ro we can roll some of that back. Okay. Twenty four, no that foul, but gets the two, two points. That. There yep, it there is. Uh, way that was very good of Haas to come to the ball yep. and be strong with it as they were coming to try to steal it. That's need to, that we got away with that. We need to be a little bit more careful of some of these passes we're making against this press. Right. Going half, halfway across the court can be a problem. Yeah. Belt with the ball, Marinci trying to lock it up a little bit. Haas right there from the three-pointer off the backboard. It's going to be out on Marinci. Good hustle there by Bevel, you know, knock, uh, putting pressure on that rebound. Working on the rosters, guys. Give me just another minute or two, and I'm going to post the rosters on Facebook for you. Young with a nice rebound. Haas gets another rebound, goes up. All ball. Oh, Travel. traveling call. Well, as, you, as you can see, they're kind of letting him play a little bit as the shots are going in, or the rebounds are going up, and girls are trying to shoot. Marenzi definitely has come out with some aggressiveness, and Round Valley is responding pretty well for it. Uh, that's her third. That's a dangerous situation. Three and a half minutes into the first quarter, and Aguilar, one of your starters, one of the tallest players it looks like on the Marincy Wildcats, All in right. foul danger. And I thought that substitute would be for her for I sure. I thought so too, but they didn't. Number 20 coming out of the game for the Wildcats. Number 20 is Roy Ball. Number two is. Or is that Medina? Medina. I apologize. Number two. No, Roy Ball. You're in. right. Sorry. Number two in for 10. So they did take 10. They off. did switch her. Yes. Okay. Force the, yep. to force that pass in there. Looks like Bell Walker's gonna get her first foul. Yep. Team first for Round Valley. So I think just a little bit from Marinci figuring out the officials as well. Aguilar unfortunately on the wrong side of that with three quick fouls. Great job. Great nice the pass here. there for the Wildcats. Number two, Cortez gets it to number 23, Roy Ball. Nope, sir, nope. 23, 23 is Cortez. 23 got it. Had a wide open break there and threw the ball. Uh, had a turnover. Had a Four, scoring opportunity. 421 left in the first quarter of play. Round Valley Elks currently trailing by three. As you can see, the level of intensity picks up. And, you know, we, we saw the other games during season, but this you're seeing a lot more intense intensity and intense play for both teams as they're wanting to win it. And do you anticipate that sticking the entire game? Like, it's intense right now. We've got four quarters to play. Yeah, bevel for two. Nice pass up. Don't usually get a sense of comfort level and things and slow. Things get back to normal a little bit after a while. But You think we'd settle in just a little bit, right? Yeah. One-point ball game now. Ada Mortensen coming in for the Round Valley Elks for Emma Young. Good words of encouragement to coach. She comes off. Hey, great turnover. Guys, be checking the Facebook page here in just a second. We're going to have the rosters up for you. <laughs> Bell was like, oops. Yeah, she Bell, her. She's Bell like, goes, oh, I should have waited. Let her grab it. Yeah, she, she hit it. You yeah. can't go up and hit it like that when you're out of bounds. Marinci with the inbound. Nice, nice pick by Bevel. 
great anticipation on Walker. That. Yeah. Jump ball. Intent. Good aggression by Haas there, resulted right. in a jump ball. Marinci will get the ball with 332 left. The official there, you know, not calling the foul. That was a correct call there. Inbound by Marinci, number 23, bringing the ball down for the Wildcats. Bell Walker, a little slow coming up the court. I wonder if she twisted an angle, ankle or something. All right, guys, posting the rosters right now. Jump on your phone and go to Instagram or Facebook at Let's Go Elks, and you can see both of the rosters for tonight's contest. Three minutes left in the first. Nice dish to 23 right in the middle. Walker with the rebound tries to hail Mary it to a bevel. Number 14 picks it up. Number 14, I believe, is Medina. Somebody messed up the numbers when they were writing them down. I don't know who that would be. Yeah, that, I got the wrong list and started. No, right. that was me. That, I think that was totally me writing No, that, crazy. Was, that was me. I, I got the list, and it was the wrong numbers. Oh, I did it over here with the same thing. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, Round Valley with the rebound, trying to get around the outside. Number 14 providing pressure out on Marinci, though. 2.30 left in the first. Oh, nice hustle by Haas again on that that pass. Great patience. That ball is slick. Boy, oh, we're they're going to call it travel. Yeah, and, and I think because of the aggressiveness that, that both teams are playing, it's resulting in a lot more fumbling of the ball and losing control and not quite quite being having their composure. Yeah. Uh, we got Logan and McCall coming in for Bevel and Walker. Shout outs to the Facebook comments. We've got O'Haver Moore. Nice, McCall. Still. Out of bounds there. Elks ball. We got O'Haver Moore watching. Lilia Whittenson is watching her cousin Emma Young um, tonight. Thanks for joining us. We got Bonnie Carroll watching as well. And Sandy from Molly Butler Lodge. Stay tuned for your fourth quarter action brought to you by Molly Butler's. Huge thanks to Sandy and her staff oh, there. Nice, nice offensive offense. rebound put back by Haas. Haas getting it in there, bringing Round Valley to the lead and for the first time steal tonight. Right there. Yeah. And is that a shooting foul? Yeah, I was looking down. Is. We're shooting too. Yep. Great job of anticipation by those guards up front on that second pass. They're jump, doing a good job of jumping that first pass after the inbound. I have a feeling the coach is going to be talking to him about that. That's not Looks the like we've time got a timeout by coach. All right, it's going to be the first timeout of the night. 30 second timeout. Is that just to get things right, real quick? Coach has got a quick chat, fix things. Yeah, we, we've stolen that second, that first pass after the inbound was about five times, and two in a row. You know, I'm sure he's like, hey, <laughs> we can't always go that same place. We can rotate it out the other way. <laughs> And also, like I said, they, they both teams are really going hard and quick, and as a result of it, it's a little out of control. We've probably seen, I don't know, 15, 20 turnovers yeah. already just yeah. to start. And so their coaches are probably saying, all right, slow down, breathe, we're in the game. You know, be smart, have your composure, work the ball around, make good passes. Got Logan shooting two. First one's not good. Got Dan the Truth Man working the camera down on the floor tonight. 205 left in the first quarter. Second one's good though. Round Valley now with a two-point lead, nine to seven. Mortensen providing pressure on the inbound. Picked up by Shiloh McCall. McCall with a quick pass to Mortensen. Passes back to Logan travel. and a travel. Yeah. If you saw that foot, she didn't dribble before she moved moved her pivot foot, and that's going to be a travel every time. Probably one of the most common traveling moves right there. Nice pressure by McCall. 
Spin move by number 23 with a shot that almost goes in. Mortensen with the rebound, gets it to Logan. Shot was by um, number 23, Cortez, for the Marinci Wildcats. Nice restraint there by Logan, not trying that full court pass. Areola into the game with some pressure, doesn't get it to drop. We're going to have a jump ball. Carly Hawes trying to snag that. It's going to be a round volley ball. If you notice, as Carly's getting those rebounds coming down, hands are all over. She's getting kind of upset by it when she brings the ball, starts to bring it down. Hands are just reaching to try to grab it. 115 left in the first. Marinci moving the ball around here, getting set, set defensively, or offensively, excuse me. Uh, very patient watching those cutters. One of the things against the zone is you want to be cutting in into the open gaps. And so Marenzi was just being patient, waiting for that to happen. Less than a minute to play. McCall from the three-point line. Oh. A little long. I thought it was in. So did I. This angle it looked like it was going to drop. Looks good. A little bit of perspective. Marenzi will inbound with 42 seconds left in the first quarter of play. One substitution, number 12, coming out for the Wildcats. Number 12, Sylvester. Inbound to number 24. Number 23 picks it up. Nice spin move there. Ooh. Shiloh going to get the foul? I think so. Yeah. 2-0. Like. I'd say uh, pause is all ball. Pretty obvious. So. Second team foul for the round, Valley Elks. McCall's first. They are giving her shots. It's quite, kind of surprising because normally after they make that pass and don't go ahead and shoot, they don't well, give him shots. Well, she it. shot, but Paz just slotted it back into the north 40. So. First one's good. Shots up. Second one will fall. Tie ball game, 34.7 left in the first. Areola bringing the ball down. Nice hustle. Save to Haas. Haas is going to, a little too much, but Martinson's going to make it count. Lots of pressure there by Mortensen and Logan. Ten seconds. Too long. Oh. Absolutely. I love the athleticism of our post. So they can cut, they can run the front of the zone, the zone press. You know that. They don't have to go back. They can cover that front uh, inbounder and you know, set it's it up quicker. It's interesting when you have those things. As a coach, you, you encourage passing the ball up the court. Yeah. When someone tries dribbling up like that, that's where you get the time taken. And so you want to encourage pass the ball. The ball moves up quicker if you pass the ball up the court. <laughs> we only have one game ball, apparently. This reminds me of track when the, we used to do disc inside and they'd roll all the way to the other side. <laughs> we got one poor ball. We're rolling all the way back across. Yeah. Gives the girls a sec to hit the reset button. Ah, it lets them rest just for a second. <laughs> it, the funny thing is when you're the one chasing that ball, you feel like everyone's just waiting. Well, they you. are. You've got to hurry to go get it. <laughs> You'll be sore tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. McCall with a three-pointer. Ten seconds on the clock. Oh, nice hustle by Mortensen. Oh. Five seconds left, Marinci with the ball. They're going to get a three-pointer possibly out of it, but McCall says no, thank you. A little bit late, I think. Yeah. That, yeah. That's going to finish the first quarter of play, brought to you by Farmers Insurance agent Mr. Troy Merrill. Thanks, Troy, for helping us out, as always, being a huge sponsor and supporter of Let's Go Elks. That's going to finish the first quarter. Man, that seems like it was quick, even with all those fouls. Well, there really wasn't too many fouls, just seven. And so, I mean, but. A lot of, a lot of them were early. And maybe yeah. that was it. The first three were like boom, 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 right? right. Really slowed down play. Yeah. And, and, and then as you saw, like it was intense. Both teams full court press the whole, ga whole quarter. It makes the game go faster because it feels like everyone's in a rush. And that's why I said, I, I just look for coaches to be saying, okay, we've got to slow it down. We've got to make good passes. We've got to execute. You know, if they're pressing us, be smart, fake a pass, make a pass, look to get the ball in the middle, look Boy. to push the ball where it needs to go. It's 
cool I had Ryan put it over there on the on I had camera having put the camera where we could see the varsity boys sporting in force behind the girls bench over there. We got uh, some cheering going on. We got a yeah. student section in the house. Yeah, a lot of the varsity boys players are part of that. Kind of cool to see that support coming yeah. back. Lady Elks back onto the court, ready for some second quarter action as the Elks lead by two. Marinci's going to start the ball off in your Woodland Building Center second quarter. Here we go. You know, it's kind of funny you talk about having uh, a student support and stuff. I went to a game just last week and, and sat by a couple of students, and it's just it's funny because they're – the, the stuff they cheer, you know. They, they, <laughs> hey, hey, your shoe's untied. Your shoe's untied. Why do, you know, they, they just they just try Whatever to get, it takes, right? Try, try to get in the players' heads, and, and you just start laughing. Yeah. <laughs> That's been a huge part of the game at all different levels, especially at the collegiate level. You have those groups of students that are just rabid fans, and they haven't been able to do that in the last season, and that's got to be it's got to be weird. Right. Second one will drop. Great field goal percentage by number 23 tonight. She four for four right now. Free throws, yes. She wow. Four for four. That's yeah, free throws, not field goals. Yeah, that's really good. Logan with the ball for the Elks. It's going to be out of bounds by Marinci. You know, several years ago, I remember watching a, a NCAA game where they were talking about some of the things that fans would do, and and players would have to have a private phone number, and if their phone number got leaked, the other school would just call it and you know, <laughs> just, 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 just do things all the time leading up to the game and just, just harass them. Up at them. night, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've got Liliana's great-grandmother watching from Fredonia this evening. Thanks for joining us on the live stream. Remember, you can jump on Facebook and send us a comment. Oh. A little bit of a wild pass. Out here under the basket wasn't touched in bounds. Yeah. As you can see, it's this press has got Marenzi uneasy. They're not quite sure where to pass it and how to pass it. They're trying to go long because they don't want to get the ball in the oh. corner. Nobody around. Oh. Again, Haas. She's going to go to the line. That's going to be 14, Medina. But you're right. It's got them bum-fuzzled just a little bit. They're not sure what to do. I mean, look at that right there. Nobody around Haas. Yeah, yeah that backside is open. You know, they're in their heads a little bit. But we haven't been able to take advantage. It's 11-11. You know, we've created a lot of opportunities, but we haven't capitalized as often as we'd like. Well, and what we've seen historically from the Lady Elks, when there is a lull in the middle of the game, scoring-wise, we need to see them build a pad. So if that does happen, they have that to sit back on. Well, in games we've saw, the second quarter has been the lull. And so hopefully this pressure can help them. Ooh, Ooh. 13's going to get yep. that, I think. Yep, Absolutely. Exactly. exactly. She threw her arms out. If she had kept her arms in, I think she'd have been okay, but she kind of did... Little like forearm is the contact is made. I'm so. not quick enough, Ethan. The I gotta pause the live stream and get it a little farther behind. I go to look to show it again, and it's already there. I'm not used to all these buttons. <laughs> Logan, here we go. Wins bounce for the Round Valley Elks. Gets to McCall. McCall with a lot of pressure. Ariola from the top gets it to Haas on the left side. Logan's gonna drive in. Double dribble. Double dribble. <laughs> <laughs> Double. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Mortensen with the Mortensen with the pressure. A little bit of a wild pass. Marinci picks it up though. Nice snag by Shiloh McCall. Shiloh's gonna make the pass to Mortensen. Mortensen with a couple dribbles in. Oh, Two great. points. Okay, Cass. You saw McCall catch that ball and then step over. Do they give him a little momentum as far as that? Um, at first he didn't get the backcourt call on that steal? Correct, correct. I, I, if you're going to get it, now if she catches it and then goes over. After she has possession, right. essentially, yeah. Right. Then I, they, they will call it for sure. I was half expecting to, to hear a whistle, but I was thinking because it was wild, right? right. She was making a play. Right. It's just funny, as you get to seeing the game, you just know that, yeah, that's yeah. not. And, and then if they call it, you just say, ah, oh, yeah. that's, that's not. Because no. how else could you get this steal and, and maintain possession yeah. of the Yeah, am ball? I not allowed to steal in this four-foot area, right. right? The other thing that people like 
if you have them cross the court until all three parts, both feet and the ball, Correct. have crossed. Ooh. Is McCall going to get a traveling yeah, yeah. call there? I, was gonna say yes. I wondered if they were going to. Right there. Either a foul. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, Stephen, you took the words right yeah. out of my yeah. mouth. Got to call something. One or the other. Marinci with the ball. Elks up by two. 631 left in the uh, first half. High pass to 24. Quick pass. Oh, it's going to be picked up by Ari. Nope. It's going to be round volley ball, though. Smart play. So has Ariola's been in almost all of the game so far. This is a different strategy for Round Valley. Is yeah, this them in about four minute mark? Is this yeah. them shaking things up a little bit, get throwing Marinci off, a little bit different play style? I have no idea. Uh, I, I'm thinking it. I expect the other two cards to come back here in a minute, just so we can keep fresh legs on that press. That's what I'm thinking. She's gonna let them wear each other, wear themselves out, and then. Well, and that's one of the things about round volley. They've got a deep bench. It's not like you're just relying. Oh. I actually got it. I you didn't know if you had you anything to say about it, but <laughs> no, I actually I, remember I the button it. was there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Castle. I was just going to say they have a deep bench. And so so as round volley, you know, going, they have those opportunities, several guards to come and rotate in. And Ariola, as she's a freshman coming in, it gives her that opportunity to, to get some bar some varsity experience, also to get state playoff experience. Yep. Our foul shooting is killing us. I, would, I was thinking we were going to have a travel there. There was a lot of tippy-toe action going on. Right. I wondered, though, because no one really had possession until there at the end. And you know, it's going to – you can see the frustration on the Marenzi players' part uh, after some of these calls, that, you know. Right, can keep an eye on some things, see if anything comes yeah. up. Young with some nice, nice work right there, right under the basket, having to make work of that, shooting it around. But but not not a great place to be in with six minutes left in the half, already eight fouls for Marinci right now. Coach not happy with the call. More than one coach standing up, you know. We'll see well, how things happen here. As I said, the refs are kind of letting them play, yeah. as you can see. They're not calling really strict fouls, just calling the blatant fouls. Ooh, pause with a little bit of trip action there. Yeah. No travel there. Logan out to McCall. McCall from the three for the side. Oh. Looks like we're going to have a foul oh, on Haas. Offensive foul. Is on, the on the rebound. Yeah. No. Emma Young. Emma Young with the, on the call. Emma yeah, Young. her first. Oh, wow. I didn't even see where Emma Young was. She was on the other block. Other block. Same thing that we kind of saw over here. Do we have a timeout going on? Yep. I didn't see the timeout get called. Go Guys. Go oh, go ahead, ahead Stephen. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, it, was it a full or a half? It is half. Half. They're half on the court. Half. Just another quick one. Yep. Just yep. another quick reset. 5.39 left in the half. You're on by Lady Oaks leading by four. <laughs> Huge thanks to all the support that we have for the playoffs. Guys, things change drastically from us from the playoffs. We have to, we have to um, apply to get to do these games with a media rights agreement. So um, thank you for the support that, that we have from all of our sponsor family for helping us bring the action to you tonight. Huge thanks to them. Make sure you go in and visit them and let them know that Let's Go Elk sent you. Good job on the officials. Is that five? Yep. The official off that time out went over and explained the prior call to the coaches, let them know what they were seeing. You know, you, you like that. It keeps keeps things going better on the bench. Well, I think it cools things yep. down, right? It'll diffuse yep. things, or it can make more frustration. Haas <laughs> right there. Dang it. Rebound by number 14 for the Wildcats. A lot of times, though, you may not agree with what they're saying, but you appreciate them taking the minute. Taking the moment, yeah. Yep. It's going to put them in one and one. Foul trouble both sides of the ball now. It's going to be a long five and a half minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Go get you some popcorn, <laughs> as Dan would say. Get you a drink. Whose birthday is it, or is this just them throwing off Marinci? I bet, it, I bet it's them throwing <laughs> off. 
We're getting a happy birthday chant going on. I love it. That one doesn't fall. Logan to Young. I think Young almost wasn't expecting that. Yeah. She's a little <laughs> bit surprised. McCall with a nice snag. Dumps it in. Back to Logan. Logan's going to get two to the line. 14. Oh, it's good having fans in the stands again, isn't it? It is nice. It's a completely different ball game. It was yeah. a lot quieter earlier in the year. Feels a lot different now. Here we go. We're shooting two from the line. 519 left in the half. Yeah, the Round Valley fan took the words out of my mouth because I knew I couldn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's over there. Steven's texting somebody to be his proxy <laughs> in the stands. I used to have that uh, Mr. Yamas, Ruben Yamas. My wife wouldn't let me get real loud at games, so Ruben was my mouthpiece. He's your proxy, yeah. took care of it for you. Logan really aggressive getting in there. Unfortunately, Round Valley going to be giving the ball up. 5-14 left in the half. Round Valley lead by three. We have seen a very low scoring both sides um, in this here in the second quarter. Yeah, this press is still really oh, low. They she got, just yeah, doubled, I say. <laughs> A little bit of frustration there. I was just about to say, got away with the double dribble, and he called it late because the guy on that side didn't. So. Yeah, he's right in front of that ref's face. Yeah. McCall to inbound, looking to the middle. Nice by Logan. No foul there. Emmy Young with the pressure. Number 23, Cortez. It's going to be out on Round Valley. Yeah, Here comes a ball. sub. Bevel coming in. Our on ball pressure's just been intense this whole game. It has been. Round Valley responded very well. Marenzi struggling getting it up the court in control. Yeah, got Bevel back I, in for Areola. Areola. I'm sure they're thankful, like, oh, yes, we get it up there well. where we don't have to <laughs> get the ball past <laughs> that court. So Marenzi making an adjustment as well as Round Valley makes an adjustment. Areola getting seven to eight minutes of play there here in the first and second quarters. Oh! That's nice a place. Shiloh's going to go coast to coast, left-handed, and it's oh, good for two. Pretty. Oh, Bevel. And still. No, and there's a change of pace. You get used to Anna. It, she she's smart, but she does not quite as quick as uh, Bevel on that front. She steps in right away and gets a steal. Oh, freshman in. Number 30, Wright coming into the game for the Round Valley Elks. She's a rebounding machine, at least down on the freshman JV level. I really enjoyed watching her this year. <laughs> Cass, that's all I'm going to pay attention to now is what the student section's cheering. I love it. If you're happy. So can we mic them next time? If you're happy and you know it. Clap your hands. Can you guys hear that, actually? I'm going to throw that to the comments on Facebook. Let us know if you can hear the student section doing their thing. It's just great to see because yeah. they've been without all season. It definitely changes the game. It's yeah. a whole different ball game. Haas back up for two, really nice. Gives Round Valley a seven point lead, 19 to 12, four and a half minutes left. And we're gonna have a push, one and one. That's gonna make it nine and nine, I think, from a foul's perspective. We're in double bonus both ways on I'm the next one. expecting hokey pokey right here. <laughs> the yeah, the bunny hop, like do they have a list yeah. of what are the dances we did you in elementary hear, school? You can see them over there putting their heads together, what they're going to do. They're going to do the Macarena here in a minute. What are they doing? I can't tell what they're singing. Yeah. Quick pass in to the freshman. It's going to be a jump ball. Possession will be to Round Valley. Seemed to catch her off guard a little bit, like she wasn't expecting her to. Hit me, even though she's open under there. Shout out to Socorro Benton watching from Oregon. Grandparents watching Marquez from Marinci. Thanks for joining us on the Let's Go Elks live stream. We appreciate it. Another jump ball. Marinci will have the ball now with 416. And Socorro's letting us know that they can absolutely hear the student section on the awesome. live stream. I love it. We've got the yeah. atmosphere mic dialed in. And Vivian Taylor's letting me know that it's Sam's birthday. Happy birthday, happy Samantha. Birthday, Sam. I wish I knew how to say happy birthday in Portuguese, but I don't. And Miley's not here to save me. <laughs> Number 20 with a shot. It's going to be a little bit short. 
24 trying to keep it in and try to bounce it off a right there, I think. Not successful, though. 4.05 left. Elks lead 19 to 12. Second quarter action brought to you by Woodland Building Center in Springerville, Arizona. Shiloh McCall oh, nice. with a nice pass to Haas on the side. Right goes up and gets it. And we're going to the line for an and one opportunity. Extends the lead to 21 to 12. I'm telling you, we got four years of great post play coming from number 30. She is tough on the boards. And she's a creative shot maker. I what? saw her make some shots. I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, good job. A little bit of sub yeah. rotation moving right now. Cortez into the game for the Mercy Wildcats. One shot. Here we go. A little bit short. She's gonna. Oh, I thought she was going to get her own rebound there. Logan's going to pick it up, though. No foul. Back up. All right. A little bit of volleyball right there, if I'm honest. Pass to 20 from the three-point line. A little bit short. Haas picks it up. Hail Mary. Shiloh McCall picks it up nice and easy on the right side this time for two. Opened it up, 23 to 12. No second quarter doldrums now. This half. We're going to have a foul there. Round Valley doubling their score in this quarter. Am I mistaken there from yeah, a numbers they, perspective? They have. They scored 12. They had 11 at the end of the first quarter. So I believe we're shooting two now. We're in double bonus. 23 to 12 with three and a half minutes left. A lot of basketball to play in this quarter with the foul situation where it is. Just yelling incoherently this time for that one. We're going to get the first one from Marinci. Number 23, Cortez on the line. We're clapping our hands again. She gets a second one. Marinci. She's six for six. She's had six points seven. from the free throw line. Marinci effectively seven for nine as a team from the free throw line. Six of those being from Cortez. Number 10 back in. Here we go. Three fouls with three and a half minutes left. So does Round Valley adjust pressure a little bit and try to get her into a fourth opportunity? I mean, with it's the fouls being where they're at, it's a dangerous place to be right now. Well, at the same at the same time, she's got to if she wants to stay in the game, she's got to play conservative. So you get it in, post her up. That's what I would look to do. But in the flow of the game, you don't want to force and get so preoccupied with attacking her Correct. that you get out of the flow of what's been working for you. So Brady Wilbank letting me know that happy birthday in Portuguese is Feliz Aniversario. A little bit different than Spanish. In Spanish, it's cumpleaños. We've got the Wrights family watching from Pennsylvania. A fan got really excited for Aguilar's shot there. Now a six-point game, Round Valley leading by six. Quick turnaround, five yeah. points for the Wildcats. Just like that, but they've clawed themselves oh. back in. Oh, oh, pun intended. Very nice, yeah. Cass. Yeah. Oh, little bouncy, bouncy of the ball. I think we're going to have a jump there, yeah. I think. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Yes. Round Valley's ball, 2.48 left in the half. Yeah, we got a little bit careless on that possession with the ball. We survived it but had a couple passes that were unexpected we got the Wrights family watching from Pennsylvania thanks for joining us here on Let's Go Elks Aguilar gets the rebound out on Round Valley on Mortensen 244 left in the half again both teams in double bonus some really sound advice there you're winning so calm down or something I can't remember that. that's what it sounded like Marinci gets it across half court, 2.30 left. Three-point opportunity, oh, wow. there it is. She knocked Just that like down. That. And now it's a three-point ball game. That was confident. I think we're have like a, it. To talk about it. Well, I, I, it's just interesting. I've seen Marinci do that several times as they've come down and pulled up for three. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just interesting. As a coach, I would be young. <laughs> Work the ball. Get the three in the momentum. Get it. You know, work the ball around so you're shooting in momentum, but, you know, they, 
they hit that one, which has clawed, has got themselves right back into the position that and they're in. And that's the first score for Sylvester, that three-pointer right there. The only other three-pointer for uh, the Wildcats was Marquez in the first. It was the first point of the game, actually, wasn't it? Yes. It was the very first shot. And they've shot several in, since then. And so, you know, it, it, it's kind of interesting. The three-point line percentage is, is a lot smaller, but you shoot so many, and... and when you hit them at the right time, they are so crucial and help a lot. Back at it here in the second quarter action. As we're getting close to halftime, Stephen, what do you think Coach Hunt and Coach Tysing are going to have to say to the Elks at this point? Is it just maintain? Are we going to make any big adjustments here? I think they're saying keep the pressure on but offensively. Let's take care of the ball. Uh, make sure we pick up the shooters uh, in transition so that they don't get those open threes. Ooh. That's a double river right there. Did she think she had somebody a little farther up? I think she was expecting yeah. a toss not to the side. Yeah, yeah it's almost like yeah. she saw something out of the corner right up, up the court or something. Yeah, if you saw Mortensen, she was going her out to get wide and to put out the opposite side, and she turned her back to her, and, yeah. right, and she turns her back. So one thing you teach, don't turn your back to the ball, never. Yeah. Walker yeah. coming into the game for Logan. Two minutes left. On that little break there, the officials warned the Marenzi coaches about something. Oh! Aguilar. Aguilar with a second shot, gets her own rebound. Mortensen picks it up. Nice block in between on by Carly. Looks like Aguilar twisted her ankle a little bit. Shiloh McCall looking to drive to the left side. Mortensen now with it, gets into the middle, takes a shot, a little bit short. Aguilar gets the rebound. It would be interesting to see what kind of wind Mortensen has after being down for three or four days. Mortensen's going to get the foul, foul there. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's kind of a silly foul. They got, they broke the press. Go back and, and pick up who you're guarding. So sometimes that happens with fatigue. She's um, got Emma coming in for her. Oh, that's her third foul, too. Cortez to the line again, another free throw. First one is good. Now making her eight for eight, no, seven eight for, for seven right now. This oh, is the eight, eight right? Eight. Oh yeah, it is, she had an end one. Yeah. Man, I'm not good with numbers today. Number nine, Don't nine for nine. That is impressive. So it wins ball games. Yep. That's what somebody told me. That is the truth. <laughs> Free throws and layups. I think we've said it a few dozen times this year. One minute left to play here. Hawes gets it to Young. Young's going to take oh. a step in, getting two Three. points. We Hawes need it. Nice. Oh. nice steal there by Bevel. Back into Young. Young's going to go up and not get that one. Aguilar? That push, yes. The call. Going to be on 20. Shiloh? Yeah. The call. Lots of fouls. I. It, how many total do it, we have? It's, it's interesting because the first, the first half you had. That that first or the first quarter. You, we had seven. You had seven. You didn't have near, and th and then it's just taken off. Aguilar gets the first one. Uh, I can tell you, free throws right alone is keeping them in the game right now. They make this many free throws, it helps keep it close. Gets that one too. One point ball game. Changes the game. Bevel with a three. A little bit too much on it off the top. Not quite off the top or they would have blown the whistle. Walker to Shiloh McCall. McCall from the top of the key. Into Young. Young with a 12-footer that falls short. Hail Mary pass to number 24. Bevel trying to get in there. Keeps it in bounds. Nice play there around Valley Ball, 31.4. Uh, very heads up. Get it off her legs so then you have an opportunity. Oh, let's see if we can get it. Check this out. You know, it, it's funny because you kind of, at times, you, you coach that, especially where you te play teams that trap a lot. They trap you in the corner, get it off their legs. and Slow it down, yeah. Yep. Pause for two. 
My favorite player at doing that that we both coached was Shiloh McCall. Shiloh. Yeah, Shiloh there we go. Shiloh Donaldson. Shiloh Donaldson. I, I don't Good. think she was expecting to see Bevel right there, right in front of her, and took a misstep. Right. Shiloh so Donaldson good at that. Oh, she took extreme pleasure in doing it. Oh, yeah. she would she would throw it hard. And <laughs> <Yeah. hit him. laughs> Take knees out. Back to McCall. Bounces off the back of the rim, picked up by Walker. Walker with the dribble in. Round volley ball, 8.4 seconds. Three-point ball game. This is where you want to score off that inbound with under 10 seconds. You want to get that set play and get it to work for you. Not a lot of time to get the shot off. McCall to the left side. You've got to take the shot here, Hawes. A little bit short. That's going to be the half. Ladies and gentlemen, after the first half of play, Round Valley leading 27 to 24 as the Lady Elks and the Wildcats head into the locker room as we get ready for halftime. Brought to you by Katie Hunt and Savvy. We're going to take just a few minutes, guys. I, I took a minute and interviewed the girls yesterday, and we talked a little bit about this month being Women's History Month. So enjoy a few minutes of goodness here with all the Lady Elks. You're watching Let's Go Elks. We'll be back in six. I'm Riley Hawes, and I'm a junior. My name is Charles Bevel, uh, number one, and I'm a senior this year. My name is Liliana Ariola. My number is 10, and I'm a freshman. I'm Kayla Logan. I'm a sophomore. I'm number 23. I'm Shiloh McCall, I'm number 20, and I'm a junior. I'm Taylor Walker, my number is 32, and I'm a junior. I'm MK Hunt, I'm number 12, and I'm a sophomore. My name is Belle Walker, um, my number is 3, I'm a senior. Hi, my name is Kyrie Walker, my number is 2, and I'm a junior. Hi, my name is Macy Soderquist, I'm number 13, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, my name is Jalen Knight, uh, my number is 30, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Emma. Um, I'm number 24 and I'm a junior. My name is Carly Hawes. I'm number 11 and I am a senior. I'm Ada Morrison, number 22, and I'm a senior. My name is Emily Muth. I'm number 4 and a junior. So Emily, this month we are honoring the women that make a difference in our lives. Who are your heroes on and off the court? And what? Uh, my grandma, my mom, just they taught me how to stay true to myself and never change for anyone. Uh, my mother, she's always pushing me to do better and always, you know, helping me fight like adversity and all the problems that I have and she's always teaching me to do the better thing. So. Um, definitely my mom or uh, my grandmas, they're definitely come support me every day, every game, they're always there, always asking me like how the game was and always just caring and yeah. Um, probably my grandma and my nana, they are such examples of service and they just love with all of their heart. My mom, because she's always pushing me to do my best in everything I do, and she's my number one supporter. My mom, because she always pushes me to do my best. Um, I would say that my hero is my mom, because she's always taught me just to love one another, and she's always been my biggest supporter in my life. I got to see my mom and Carly, because my mom's always pushing me to do my best, and because Carly, she works her hardest, and it, I feel like it affects everyone on the team. Um, my mom and my grandma. Because uh, they are such great examples of hard work and to never give up on what you believe in. It's got to be my mom. She does everything for me, and she's so strong, and I just love her for everything she does for me. Well, probably my mom. She has always been there for me, like especially during sports. She's always cheered me on and told me to do my best. My sister is my hero because she has always um, like taught me to like work hard and keep going and not give up. So. Someone who I look up to is my mom and grandma because they're always there supporting me. My mom. Because um, my mom always pushes me to do my hardest and to never give up. Uh, probably my mom and my sister because they always push me to do my best whenever I'm doing something. Yeah. 
there's a lot of little girls in the elementary school and the middle school that look up to you as a role model and a hero. What advice for life do you have for them? Um, never give up and don't let anybody change your dreams or what you want to do. Uh, I would just say work hard and always worry about yourself. You know, if you're always worrying about yourself and working hard yourself, then you're going to do great things. You know, always work hard. Uh, definitely to keep working hard. Sometimes it's hard to push through some things um, and take the time to put in the extra work because it'll definitely pay off um, in the long run. So. Um, probably just to do everything with like your heart and if like always looking for service and um, when you play like just always play like it's your last because you never know you could get hurt or you could like corona happens again hopefully not but um like you never know when a game could be your last or when an opportunity could never happen again to be a good teammate and always be friends to everyone and nice and include everyone okay to them uh be coachable and always try your best um, the advice that I would give to the younger girls is to always take the time to put in the extra work and effort. Um, probably just to always show up to practice and always try your best because it shows up again. Um, just be nice and don't start drama because it just tears people down. You gotta include everyone, you never know what anyone's going through. And it will help you make friends on the court, off the court, and it will make you a better person overall. Hmm. On the court, I'd say don't ever give up. Keep keep pushing even if if you're having a bad day, you know, just just do your best. Off the court, um, be your best self. Don't don't let others like get to you and you know, just live your life. To just keep working hard, like it'll show like if you are putting the time in it shows and you you'll get the playing time that you want. And my advice to you guys is never give up and always put in the work. Work your hardest and always push yourself and your teammates even if even if you feel like giving up. Always try to include everyone with you, what you do because you never know how they feel or what they're going through that day. So All right, guys, here we are. We've got about three minutes left of halftime. A huge thanks to the varsity girls uh, basketball team for taking a minute and chatting with me. It was neat to hear some of their responses and to hear the, uh, how much their moms, their grandmas really, really mean to them. And so a huge thanks to those ladies and for Coach Tizing for letting me get in the middle of practice for a few minutes there. So, Stephen, Cass, as we get ready for the second half of basketball, what do you anticipate? Is it going to be the last... We saw a push from the Lady Elks with the last few minutes of the second quarter. Cass, do you anticipate seeing that straight off the bat in the third? I, I, I don't think they'll let up, especially knowing Coach Tysling. She loves to put pressure on and just apply, keep the pressure. And it has been successful. It's unfortunate that Round Valley hasn't had the opportunity to capitalize on all of those turnovers that they've caused. But, you know, because had they done that, they'd probably be up by 20 about now. But... You know, knowing her, she, they're going to continue jumping. She's going to continue using all of her bench to apply and to create that, that opportunity. You know, uh, Stephen talked earlier about those having quick posts that are able to run the floor well and apply pressure. And, and I'll see, I, I'd imagine we'll see a lot more of that. Hopefully they can get under control and capitalize on those turnovers. Uh, Marenzi, I would uh, expect or imagine that they will uh, want to be under control and and be able to break that that pressure. Stephen, anything additional that you anticipate us seeing here in the second half? The same thing. I think their coaches are going to tell them to break the pressure, hit the open shot, don't hesitate as you have the opportunity to pull up and hit the three. 
They've done it again a couple of times, catch the ball going in step with momentum. Uh, take advantage of the press. Let's break it, have odd man situations to where we can finish in good in good situations. So I, that's I anticipate uh, what, as a coach, that Marenzi's coach is saying. Take care of the ball better, stay out of foul trouble. We know what the referees are looking for at this point. Play smart. So guys, less than a minute here, the, the Lady Elks and the Lady Wildcats back onto the court. So a huge thanks to Katie Hunt for sponsoring your halftime, bringing you the, the interviews with the Lady Elks. And check her out on Facebook with Savvy. It's a unique lineup of clothes at Savvy. Find her at Katie Hunt on Facebook. And guys, we're right back at it just like that. We're not messing around. They didn't even use their full minute that was left for the halftime. Oh. We're gonna start things off with a shooting foul. Right away. But Off aggression, right Off away aggression. Offensive rebound, you know, uh, provided that opportunity. It's gonna be Shiloh McCall's second, unless they have, oh, third, there we go. She had the last foul of the first half and the first, half, first foul of the second half. Third quarter basketball brought to you by State Farm, Agent Jocelyn Peters located in Eager, Arizona. First shot's gonna be good. Marinci as a team has only missed two free throws all night. Second one is good. See if they set, set the press a little bit. One man press here. One point ball game. Walker passes to Logan. Logan out to Hawes with a three. A little bit long, doesn't drop. Marinci basketball. You know, already as it starts out, you can kind of see the, the game's starting to slow down just a little bit. Yeah. Do you think we're going to settle in for the second oh. half? Do you see both teams doing it? Well. <laughs> oh, Logan dribbles off at number 24's foot, right. I think. And th those are the, the things that Round Valley needs Ooh, that's to a capitalize reach. on right there. Yeah. So if you watch here, you're going to see a little bit of reach after the shot here. Logan unable to quite get it. Walker brings it around. Oh, our camera didn't quite get turned there. Yeah, you know, you get those quick, easy steals. You want to be able to finish under the basket. Oh, tried to force it to high post. <laughs> Dad does Oh, 14 with all the room in the world. Oh. She's going to get a, a shooting foul there. Oz is going to pick up that foul. Dad likes his daughter on the block, not out, not out on the perimeter. Second foul for Haas of the night. First one's no good. That's the only the third missed free throw for the Marinci Wildcats tonight. Missed them both. Oh, oh, dang. That's a hug. Yeah. That's hugging. Yep, you're definitely going to get called for a foul when you do that. That's just over friendliness That's is all fourth. that is. 14 with four. One with four, one with three in their top five players. That's not we're, what you want as a coach. We're going to see a sub coming in. And now we're going to see a the illegal screen was called. Did she stick her knee out or something there? Yeah, her angle just wasn't very good, and she kind of clipped her from behind. So... There wasn't much contact, but there was enough to where it, it's an illegal yeah. screen. Back to number 12 for the Marinci Wildcats. Logan with a, oh, Logan grabs it again. Here we go, Walker with it. I thought Bevel was gonna end up with it. Walker goes up. Pass to number 10, Aguilar with it. Aguilar takes the step. Sorry. And is that her fourth That's or fifth? That's her fourth. That's her fourth. Oh, here we go. Let's see if we can get it. Oh, and we switched cameras right away. <laughs> oh. oh, close. Oh, technology. 646 left in the third quarter. Play around Valley Oaks leading by one. I mean, Three that, fouls for each already. That was a good call. Uh, Haas was there way early, and the girl just went right over. You know. Yeah, she was set. It wasn't a knockdown, drag out type charge, but. Bevel comes around the right side. 
Ooh, Haas with a nice jumper there. Pretty. Ooh. Ooh. That was a little movement, no call. The referee turned to run just as I think she might have clipped the line here, but good aggressive play on their part. Good defense by Wright, still getting two points for Marinci though, one point lead by the Brown Valley Elks. Yeah, and as, as you see, one of the things you watch is posts a lot of times, and yep. you try to coach, that they you don't want them in front of you. And you saw, saw it both ends. If you let them in front of you, they have access to pull up and shoot. And you saw Haas down here do that, and then down here you saw uh, Aguilar do the exact same thing where they were behind, so she's able to pull up for that nice little shot. Nice little act of sportsmanship by Walker there. If you guys saw it, she went down on the reach, and Walker helped her up there. It was a good little... Good little show of sportsmanship. A little bit of timeout. It looks like it is a 30 second because everybody's still on the court. I didn't see the call. Just under six minutes left to play in the third. Seven fouls already in two minutes and two seconds. Seven fouls. Yep. We may see the depth of both of these rosters come into play here in the fourth quarter. Yep. It's funny because the first quarter we thought, wow, they're letting them play a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's tightened up. <laughs> and now they, it's tightened up. They're calling a lot more fouls. Well, but, but that's something that if you let it happen too much and then you try to pull it back, it can be dangerous. Yeah. yeah. It's a difficult. Oh, was pushing three. on Wright under the basket. That's her third, I believe, right? Jalen Wright. I have two. Two. See if we can see it. Oh, three. You're right. I missed one. Wonder she who got I the chart did on the block here. Oh, I must have missed that one. Half. So Emmy Young. Or I gave it to someone else. <laughs> 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 it's a good thing I'm not an official book because <laughs> it's hard to watch and, and talk. I think about. Bevel's going to get that there. No. Travel. Travel. I'm going to watch the replay. i got to see the travel. There it is. Substitutions coming in for the Marincy Wildcats. Is that number 11, I think? Haas is hiding her. Quick pass right back to Walker from the side. Not quite enough on it. You know, one of the most deadly weapons is the inbounder. Throw it in and then get it right back to them because people, Bevel on the steal people again. forget about it. Yeah, and they're open. Yep. They come in and they're, they're nobody they're around. They're open because they forget about it. Walker gets it over to the Bevel. Bevel dumps it into Haas. Haas goes up, draws, draws the foul. Great position on the block there. Instant replays tonight brought to you by Round Valley Tiny Village. Huge thanks to them for being supportive of the stream tonight, Round Valley Tiny Village. May or may not be related to Coach Teisling, yeah, I think. Say, a little bit. Say that kind of surprised yeah. me that they would be supporting the stream. You How know? about that? <laughs> Haas's first one does not land. Still a one-point ball game. Substitute coming in. Number 14 coming in, that is Medina. Medina coming in for number 12, Sylvester. Student section disassembling. What's going on? Are they coming over to the side? They're going yes. to the other end. So yes. when they, they can harass the foul shooter a little bit. <laughs> Double, Double with some work there. So dangerous. Out on. I'm not. I'm going to wait. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yep. Marinci, yeah, so it's around volleyball. I thought that's what it was going to be, but I... I didn't want to say it and jinx yeah. it. Oh, this is better. They're under the basket. I, I was say it might, might have caused a problem if they had set up behind the Marinci <laughs> For the bench. team, yeah. yeah. I don't know if the refs would have liked that too, too much. Haas coming in. Nice move by Haas. Not quite enough on it, though. Rebound by Cortez for Marinci. Gets it to oh, number 11. Definite backcourt. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. She can stare at the referee all she wants. That was an easy call. <laughs> Absolutely. Sanchez not wanting to hold on to the ball very long. Gets rid of it right away, resulting in a backcourt. Walker goes in. Doesn't get the ball to Young. Picked up by Cortez. Travel. Travel. So here, here's an opportunity for the Round Valley Elves to take advantage of this right now. I think a little bit of mental stunting going on. A little bit of mistakes. Round Valley steps in with a score here. I think it's going to build some momentum. Yeah, 
we need to start converting on these opportunities. We've had plenty. Logan for three. Nice Lip. rebound. Walker gets it to Bevel. Young goes in. Another missed opportunity. Three offensive shots, three offensive rebounds, none of them resulting in points. Medina with the ball, passes to number 13 for a Way three. It's going to be short. Woo! I think that's going to be, yes. yeah, on 14. Yeah. 14. That's, that's her fifth. That's her fifth. That's yeah. five. She's out of the game. Yeah, that we see the we see the judges at the table letting her know that that's five. You know, it was official. I th I'd let that one go. I think that was kind of a incidental call. They both went up for the yeah. ball. Just momentum. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and that's a hard one to hard one to take if yeah. you're especially as your fifth. Medina, yeah. You know, and especially when you're the one that hit the ground harder. You know, <laughs> but you you get the foul goes on you. Technically, it's probably the correct call, but it could have easily been a no call. Yeah. Hawes goes up, a lot of ball on that. Emma Young with it. Emma Young to Walker, Walker from the free throw line. There nice. Go. Three point ball game, four minutes left in the third. Yeah, if you saw her set it up, penetrate and kick it out to her, she's wide open there for that elbow yeah. shot. And for what we do, it's so important that we hit a basket because that's when we're most effective in our press is the after shot press that for the offense doesn't set up quite as well. Cortez coming in for Sanchez for the Mercy Wildcats. Logan with the inbound to Bevel. Bevel trying to get it to Hawes right there underneath. Walker gets it ball back though. Logan from the top calling a play out. 3.43 left in the third. Travel. Travel. Yep. Uh, shuffled their feet just a little bit on that fake, which I love to see, fake the, fake the pass. It gets them moving. Just got to make sure your feet stay planted. Hey, it's Kyron Walker's birthday. It's Kiri's dad's birthday here. Young goes up. It's, it's going to be offensive, though. Off. See if we can catch it on the replay here. If you wouldn't have called that one, it would have been, it would have been ugly. Uh, these fans over here would have would have lost it a little bit, I think. Well, because they called yeah, the one exactly. on there, you know. And, and at least there's consistency. Yes, exactly. And that's, that's what you ask. You, you call it on one, you better call it down at the other one. Yep. Megan, I would agree those interviews were really fun to do. I'm glad that they, they let us take a few minutes to get them. We're going to post that independently on Friday, but you can always link it at halftime. That's going to be out on Round Valley. No, it's out on Marinta. I apologize. Round Valley ball, 325 left. Sandy, do you guys got the game going on up at Molly's right now? A huge thanks to Sandy's at Molly Butler Lodge in Greer. Huge supporter of our streams. We thank them for yep. being part. We're going to the line, guys. That's it's easy. a bonus. Number 24. Yeah. Yep, I was going to say this number 24 is asking for it. They just called the Knowing this official, knowing this official, he is not going to take That's attitude. That's going to be her fourth. Yeah. And so is that two fouls then? Do we have the foul and then the technical? Yep. Yep. Puts it Already in posted on board, fourth yep. foul. That's her fourth foul. One and one. Yeah, one and one, and then the technical, correct? Yep. So if it's one and one, don't we need the teams lined up, or should no. you hit the technical no. first? No, because yep. there's no rebounding taking yeah, place. Yeah, because they'll get it at half court no matter what. So the one and one, good. That's the first one good for Logan. So I was saying, Kyrie's uncle watching from Tucson. Thanks, Lee, for joining us on Let's Go Elks. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We appreciate it as we try to climb to 1,000. No, that's a smart call there. You know, as a coach, she just hit the two one-on-one -on -one foul shots. Now let we're her, shooting two. Let her shoot the next one. She's in rhythm. Yep, all alone. She's got it dialed in, <laughs> just a little bit off. And I jinxed her. You don't even have the microphone, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not burning one of these headsets. Yeah. Uh, Fourth shot here. Oh. <laughs> Five-point ball game is the Round Valley Elks lead with 3.20 left in the third. 33-28, to 28. five team fouls for the Elks, eight team fouls for the Marinci Wildcats. Wildcats already in foul trouble. Round Valley not that far off of the bonus situation, so we have very high fouling ball game. How many people do we have in foul trouble right now, Cass, in the third quarter? Uh, you know, Round Valley's got one, two, three three that are kind of in foul trouble. Marinci has one, two, th three, 
And uh, one eject, well, and one's one already eject, out. One disqualification, yeah. yep. So there was a there was a foul, and the foul was against Round Valley. It's going to be Megan Young's fourth, so we're going to sub her out right now. The referee talking to number twelve. I'm not sure what that conversation's about. Nice pick there by Bevel, oh. trying to slow it down. A little bit of an assist by Haas. Bevel, nobody home, but Logan right there. Two oh. points. She almost got too far under the basket. <laughs> Here comes the press from Round Valley. Logan trying to get in there. Number 20 for the three-point shot for Marinci. A little bit short. Walker with the rebound. Number 20, yep, Roy Ball with the shot. Her. Yep, that's going to be on Walker, that elbow. So we're shooting one and one, the Wildcats are. Both teams in bonus now. If she had kept her hand on the ball, I think she had been okay. But when she released it and started waving it, it drew the attention a little bit more. Referee's yeah. taking just a second well, here. And what they're discussing, is she shooting one and one or is it an offensive foul? Is it a player an control yeah. foul, yeah. And so if it's offensive, we're inbounding, right? right. right. Yeah. And so you're not shooting one and one because it was offensive foul. Walker picks off that inbound pass. She's got two on her. Walker stepped out. I'm okay with that. I was waiting for a foul call, and I was trying to understand where, yeah. where it was picked up. So inbound from Marinci, 243 left in the third. They're calling, fouls are being called so much that. It wouldn't have surprised me. Right, right. And this, we're still in the third quarter. <laughs> you know, it's blocked. The travel. Pause with a travel call, 235 left. You know, and this goes back to what you said before. If you let him play at the beginning and then you try to reel it back in, it's you can't. You can't. It's hard. It's hard. I, they, if they let it escalate too much, you can't bring it back. And so as you see all these fouls taking place, you know, it, they're calling, trying to get it under control, but it, it's just... A little difficult because both teams are playing aggressive and, and getting after it. Logan gets it to Walker. Ada Mortensen with it. A little bit short there. Walker trying to pick up the rebound. Does so. Back out. Back to Mortensen. Oh. I think that might have been a one too many pass opportunity yeah. there. I think Mortensen should have taken the shot again right where she was right. before. Yeah, Haas is setting up to block out for the rebound. And the ball came, to, came her way. Once again, third quarter action brought to you by State Farm. Uh, uh, Agent Jocelyn Peters here in Eager, Arizona. Thanks to them for bringing the third quarter action here in the Dome. And once again, you see. Yeah. Oh, Bevel knows. Yeah. Got that knee. Threw that leg out there a little bit. So. See if we can watch this back on the replay. Let's see if we get a good shot of this. I think Bevel. Yep, yeah. just a little bit of hip and knee action there. Stuck that knee out. Bevel's going to go out and Shiloh McCall coming into the game. That's uh, Bevel's third. We're shooting one and one, both teams with eight team fouls. Round Valley with a very high free throw percentage. And 23 is the one draining them all. Yep. She is, she's un unbelievable. That's 11. 11 for 11? Yep. Oh my. She has made 11 free throws. Six oh, point ball game, that's her first miss of the night. Carly Haas, number 11 with the rebound. 12 providing a lot of pressure. Logan gets the pass as we cross half court. Carrying the ball. First yep. call of the night with carrying. Go back and see if we can take a peek at that here. Yep. Took that bounce just a little bit. Came up a little high unexpectedly. Now I've had games where the ball's really bouncy. Yeah. <laughs> and the team, the player were like, Coach, I can't, it's, it's really bouncy. I just do a little pressure and it flies up. You know, with Little League, they, the ball, they seriously, I feel like they overinflated it. And my son was having a hard time with that. He was carrying a ton, I think, because of, of that going on. Was, just, yeah. I think Coach Teisling was calling a timeout or was she subbing? What, what no, was going was on there? She was just saying, you need to get the, the Anna wanted her mask off. Ah. 20 drives in on the baseline. Does not get it. Jump ball. Jump ball. Will be round valleys. 
143 left in the third quarter play around Holly Lady Elks leading by six. Walker with the inbound. Ada Mortensen with the ball. It's an interesting press. It's really more of a token slow you down press. That's a push off, yep. Yeah. We're gonna go to the line, yeah. Yeah, 12 was riding pause completely out of the play. Yeah, she's gonna go to the line. I thought that was a nice move by Mortensen as well. Nice move for a nice shot there. We're going to the line. Haas will go to the line. 19 foul for Marinci Wildcats. 131 left in the third. Ethan, you're doing a stellar job over there. I apologize. He's, we're, we're just going to have to buy a fourth headset, I guess. We usually have Ethan with a headset on where he's talking to the camera crew, so it's hard for him to do both. Morrison gets two points there. Nice offensive rebound. Oh, yeah, yeah little yeah. travel action. Yeah. Good pressure there by the Elks. It was definitely an awkward step. I'm not 100% sure she traveled, but it was kind of a, looked awkward. Well, I, so I thought it. that when was her. Doubt, call it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I, Stephen, I think you're right. I think that was her pivot foot. I don't think yeah. that she had traveled, but yeah. Haas goes up. Haas gets the ball, goes down. Whoa, hello. Jump ball. Marenzi's ball. It's official trying to calm things down a little bit. Is that what the conversation is in yes. the middle? Yeah. Was a little bit of a heat and aggression there. Whoa. Number 24, Marquez with it. You know, it's funny, both uh, both sets of fans aren't happy. Nobody. But you look at the clock, The it's nine to nine. You yep. know, uh, yep. it's been an evenly called game. Just not happy with the calls in general, yeah. I guess. Marinci to the line. Oh, that nice one doesn't rebound. drop. Toss picks it up though, very nice. Pause in the air. She was up in the air for what felt like forever, picking up that ball. Round Valley by eight, one minute left in the third. Here in the State Farm third quarter, Shiloh McCall with it to Walker. Walker trying to recover it, almost a reach there. Shiloh McCall at the top. Mortensen working in, trying to set a pick. Walker gets the ball. Walker looking for Haas, I think. Mortensen out to Areola. Areola back to Walker. Renzi picks it up. Double dribble. Yep. I'm going to have to get that on the soundboard. Double dribble. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Put it as your ringtone. My wife was watching a show today, and I heard a ringtone, and it was like from 2003, and I'm like, man, that show's old. Looks like Haas is going to go to the line for two. That's 24. That's going to be her Fifth, she's out. She's walking off, I think. Yeah, that's that's her fifth. She's out of the game. Yeah, confirming it from the board, from the scores table right now. Got 13 coming in. We checked at halftime, and St. John's was up um, by a matter of 10 to 15 points. I think it was 30-something to 21. 38-21. 38-21 was the score. We'll try to check in on that here again. Haas with the first one good, making it a nine-point ball game. Check the comments here. Shane Walker. Shane, In no Hawaii, Hawaii jokes yet. Thanks In for joining us. A little bit short on that. Haas gets her own rebound. Less than 30 seconds. Mortensen with the shot. Doesn't fall. No, Shane, half of Round Valley is going to be there for spring break next week. Sure what it sounds like. <laughs> I know of three families that are going to be, be there, so... Nice block again by her post. I forget what island he's on, though. They're going to all distribute themselves. Oh, that's going to be it. Hawes yep. unable to bring it down, unfortunately, as we wrap up the third quarter. Round Valley extends their lead to nine. It was a three-point ball game, wasn't it, when we started the half? Yep. yep. And they scored the first bucket to cut it to one. So six points gained. 19 fouls occurred. <laughs> my, my, my. As we get ready for the fourth quarter action here in the Dome, we got a minute break. Once again, a huge thanks to all of our sponsors. It, we couldn't do it without them. We appreciate them. As we do what we do, as we were setting up, we were talking about what are we doing next? What do we, what do, we do to expand, build out, and make things a little bit better? And we wouldn't be able to have those conversations without you guys. This season was crazy. 
and it's because of our amazing sponsor family that we were able to purchase the equipment to cover all the basketball games and the wrestling that we did. And so a huge thanks to them for, for supporting what we do. It's something that we really enjoy, so thank you. Nineteen fouls called in eight minutes of play. Woo. Woo. It's one, it's one and done. You know, there's no point in leaving a little energy on the sidelines tonight. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. Uh, it's it all on the court. It's going to be the longest eight minutes, I think, right here. Well, I mean, even that last that six minutes, we were in bonus with the last six minutes, yeah. <laughs> or yeah. five minutes. And now we're double bonus all game long. For both game. teams, yeah. yeah. Right. Shiloh McCall inbounds to Areola. Here we go. It's a nine-point ball game. Marincy Wildcats trailing right now in the first round of the playoffs. Oh, good nice hustle. play there. I'm going to try to get this replay. I want to see that behind-the-back craziness. Oh, we get to see it again. Check this out. Whoop. <laughs> she traveled. Oh, sorry you guys missed a traveling call, but that instant replay was epic. It's one of those things I'm so open. I'm not used to having the ball in this position. What should I do? <laughs> uh, she wasn't sure if she has across half court yet, you know, to get it back to the guard or what. So, Marinci inbounds it, gets across half court. Seven and a half minutes left in the game. Round Valley extends their lead to 11. A nice block by Mortensen. Get a hand on it. Wildcat ball underneath, 721 left in the ball game. 13 coming to inbound the ball onto Barrows. I think we're going to see a jump ball here. Will be Marinci's again. Good hustle by Kyrie getting around that uh, number 10. She is open. She'd snuck behind Kyrie in that low, low post. Oh. oh, nice. Walker with Walker. hands for days. Great anticipation there. She read you know, that she, play well. She does that very well. If you see her defensive anticipation, she anticipates where the ball is That's amazing. Jumps in and gets it. Like I said, I really enjoy the energy that she brings to the Lady Elks team. Right, and, and that's part of it because she can anticipate where the ball is going to go and get still. So yeah. I'm glad to see her, her putting the timing now. She's going to get a foul. We're going to the line. How many fouls is that for Walker tonight? Uh, two. two. I have two. Yeah. Yep. That's correct. Yeah, we got to find that phantom foul of uh, rights that went to somebody <laughs> else on that to once. Someone. Yeah. 23. The foul wasn't phantom, but where it ended up in the book was. That's what I wanted <laughs> to correct. Yeah, I'm yeah. wondering if it's one close to her. Upper yeah. above, yeah, yeah, above or below. Even the Elks getting in on the excitement now. That one doesn't drop. Pause picks it up. Hail Mary. There's Areola. Nice and easy for two. 80 foot assist by. That was by quite the assist. Pause. Ooh, charge. Oh. oh. No. Hey. Here, we can watch oh. it again here on the live stream. Let's see if we think she was planted. Oh, that was probably a good call. She got there a little bit late. And we go to the line, yeah. Aguilar to the line. Now Aguilar's had had three fouls straight away. She's at four now, correct? Correct. 12 point ball game, just under seven minutes to play. Yeah, that would have been her fifth if it had gone the other way. First one's a little short. Yeah, I'm sure the coach was uh, <laughs> clinching a just a little bit, yeah. yeah. Second shot. Second one doesn't drop either. Again, Hawes with the rebound. Ariola bringing the ball down for the Lady Elks. Right side. Oh, nice, nice pass in to Hawes. When they get that entry pass from the top, that's just pretty. Right. Well, it just, it like sneaks through. Yes. It was like three people that got by right there. And you see, if you see Haas, she seals her man very well. Yep. So she posts, she gets him sealed to where she has full access to the basket. 
You'd think her dad was an All-State post <laughs> or something. Maybe. Yeah. McCall's going to the line to shoot two with a big old smile on her face. Third foul for number 11 for the Wildcats. That's Sanchez. First shot is off. Dan the Truth Muth getting readjusted so we can cut back to him here in a second. McCall with her second shot. Drains it. 13-point ball game. Seven, six and a half minutes left. Round Valley continuing with the two-man press. Cortez with the ball. Cortez with the one-legged jump shot there. Walker picks up the rebound. Walker takes her dribble. Cortez trying to pressure with, also with Sylvester, number 12. Yep. A carry. Again. We can watch that one again. Again, there's a coach. He drew his attention on that spin move, and then. He was watching her yeah, hand yeah. for the next one. Yeah. As a coach, you'd be sitting there saying passing the ball up the court is a lot quicker, you know, because if you saw you had three girls that were surrounding her, look to push the ball up. Oh, man, nobody needs to see our faces right now. You guys get to see us here. Blasted. You're not here to watch us. You're here to watch the game. Thank Absol you very much. Absolutely. <laughs> There's your cheering section right there. We got the students getting it done. A lot of love right there. Fourth quarter basketball brought to you by Molly Butler's. First quarter was brought to you by Mr. Troy Merrill. Huge thanks again to all of our sponsors. If this score holds up, I want to encourage Round Valley fans to get tickets online for the St. John's Round Valley game on Saturday night. Uh, have to buy all tickets online for state playoff games. So. Yeah, I'll be watching the, the Booster Club Facebook group. Um, Mr. Cochran's been pretty good at communicating that kind of stuff as it goes live and stuff. That game will be Saturday. Um, Let's Go Elks will be having a conversation to decide um, if we will try to cover the game as well. We know that Legacy Teen Production will probably be per will doing it should St. John's win that game. We're back at it. Number four bringing the ball down, Leonard. Leonard with a pass to 13 to Ontiveros. Six minutes left in the ballgame. Round Valley by 13. Pass to Sylvester. Sylvester fumbles the ball a little bit. It's going to be Round Valley ball inbound by Areola. It's been a good job, Aguilar, after picking up those three early fouls to be able to stay in the game. Right. Right. Oh. Nice and drive. I think that's going to be on 13 on Taveros. See if we can go back and take a peek at it. Here we go. Areola drives, does draw the foul, and it will be 13's second. It's actually on Sylvester. No, it was 13, 13 is on Taveros. Oh, they did call 13. Yes. First free throw drops. Here comes the second shot, Round Valley by 14. Nice, yeah. second one drops as well. Nice clutch nice by the freshman. Hustle. Nice hustle on that. It's going to be out on round Valley though. Good defense. Oh. Nice pick by Haas there. Haas to Areola. Oh, nobody around McCall. Oh, there oh, we go. Pretty. Take it. That's in. Yeah, that's not the player that you want to have her feet set nope. if you're right. the opposing team. She had all the time in the world to get it set. <laughs> yeah. Nice bounce off the rim and back in, though. Yeah. In and out, popcorned off the backboard. Oh, back in. Popcorn. popcorn. Popcorned in and out. Here, okay, so here's what we do with popcorn at our house. We, we oil, light oil pop on the oven, yeah. but we put Creole in it when we cook it and make spicy popcorn. Ooh. If you haven't done it, you should do it. I think Ethan would agree. I hope so, because that's what we got him for Christmas. Areola <laughs> with the rebound. Nice. Nice behind the back move there. In in traffic on the baseline. That was a tough, <laughs> tough little exchange there. Guys, if you missed our halftime coverage, make sure you go back and watch who these girls as heroes are and the advice they have for the younger generation of Lady Elks. 
it was pretty neat to hear all of them, especially um, the freshmen and all the underclassmen. I think Mortensen is going to get the foul there. And that's a common mistake. You've got him trapped, and instead of just staying there, they close in more and more and more and over pressure and pick up the foul. Yeah. Well, and a lot of times it's that reach, yeah. the reach where they just have them. They're not going to pass over you. Again, it's hugging. They're just trying. It's just it's a friendly game. Showing, yeah. Sharing the love. Yes. Easy to do. That's what's trying to happen. So we got a sub coming in for the Elks. That is 30 coming back into the game. Right coming back in. Right for Ada Mortensen. Ada's fourth. Do we have a timeout? I didn't see who called it. Looks Marenzi like full. full. Yep. 18 point ball game, just under five minutes. While we've got a second, let me grab my laptop and we'll take a look at the St. John's game. St. John, or Round Valley has three timeouts left. Marenzi one. Well, I don't have a scoreboard. So we will watch the game for a second or listen until we. Is this the boys? Yeah, it looks like the boys game. Oh, St. John's that's why. Boys. That's, that's why. St. John's boys is playing Santan Charter. That makes more sense. I, so Lady Redskins versus there Phoenix. Go. There we go. Yeah. So that game's over, it looks like. Let's see if we can fast forward. Spoiler alert. Oh, oh yeah. St. John's with a rather big lead, 54 to 28. Yeah, so that's why it's off because it probably went to running clock in the fourth quarter. So Lady Redskins are advancing on. So winner of this game will play in St. John's. Number 23, she's like, 99 out of 100 from the line right now. I think she's only missed one. No. She's missed, yep. her, she's missed four, actually. She's missed her last three. She hit that one. Ariola with the inbound. Pause back to Ariola. <laughs> nice. Ariola. Right, trying to follow through with it. You know, you talk about the boys' boys Ooh. bracket, and if if you talk look at the boys' bracket, there's only like three public school teams that's in the tournament. Really? Really? Yeah, the rest of them are private or charter schools, which are technically public schools. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, and so kind of a hybrid. Yeah. Anyway, it's kind of interesting to look at. You, d you don't have very many of the public two schools in it. Marinci trying to work the clock to their advantage with four and a half minutes, trying to catch up on that 17 point deficit that they have. Ooh, no call there. Shot by Aguilar, it's gonna be good for two, 15 point ball game. As uh, Mr. Hancock once told me, ugly doesn't mean illegal. Mortensen out to McCall for another three. 51-33. On to Barros with the pass. It gets it out to the right side. Walker with the rebound. Just under four minutes. We're halfway through the fourth quarter of play. Walker with a pass to McCall. McCall takes the shot. Oop, there we got a call over the back. Yep. Wright's going to get that call. It's her fourth. Foot's pushing. There is no over the back, but yep. that's why she got it. Pushed from behind. Attempted hugging. Yeah. 18 points. It's, ball it's always funny because when you have someone that's taller than the person doing it, everyone's like, over the back, over the back. Right, <laughs> and that right. tall person's just reaching up. So I just want the ball. <laughs> Holding it over. You know, they could grab it all they want over <laughs> the top of them as long as Without they're not contact. making that contact, contact or displacing them. Correct. Oh, Cass, so I've got an interesting question for you. On an inbound pass underneath, when if there's somebody in the lane, does three in the key count start when they enter 
before the inbound, or does the ball have to be inbound before that three seconds begins? It has to be inbound. We were, we were discussing that during the Little League Championship, and I thought the ball would have to be in play for that three to count Correct. for anything. Correct. Correct. And three seconds, if they're trying to score, they're moving with the ball in the key, that's not three seconds, but as soon as they pass it out without shooting, then the three seconds Haas? goes into effect. Was that, was that foul against Haas there? We're going to yes. go back and watch. And it looks like it. Interesting. Her fourth. I didn't see what happened there. Aguilar with her first one. Again, super surprising. Aguilar still in the game, has changed her game, has controlled herself a little bit, and with four fouls for almost all the game. Yeah, it's impressive. Granted, she didn't play a lot in the third quarter. Gets both of her free throws there. The team keeps thinking, oh, yeah. It's the second the time in a row way. that she's taken the, her own made shot and tried to throw it in again. 16-point ball game. Walker from the top of the key kicks it out to Haas. Three and a half minutes left. Ariola with the ball now. Nice dish out to Walker. All yeah. ball there. This is where as a coach, you're like, Haas, get down underneath the basket. Don't pick up the cheapy up top. So Ariola, I think, is going to pick that up. Yeah, that's going to be her fourth foul. <laughs> Let's take a look. <laughs> yeah, we've got a time white. Three sixteen left in the ball game. Sixteen points. What's the emergency coach saying right now? How do you make sixteen points in three minutes? Is it just pot? Is it just tons of pressure? All press. Uh, no mistakes. You're just, he's telling them to leave it all on the court. You've got three minutes. Get after it. This is it. You have nothing to lose. And get after Do everything you possibly can to, to try to get some points, get some baskets. Maybe um, in that situation, just take shots. Yeah. 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 Take, yeah. take shots when you have them and maybe look to double team when the opportunity uh, presents itself. Uh, you know, Coach Pond would encourage that, set the trap up around the half court when a the yeah. opportunity uh, presented itself. And, uh, you got to be careful with the double team right now, though, just because of how many fouls that we have seen yeah. is the presence of two just going to create that opportunity even more. Right. And that might not be a bad thing. if, Because, I mean, you hit a couple of threes, you're within 10. You know, 10 points, three p minutes or less is very doable, supposing, you know, you, you have the momentum, you have the things going on your side. You're going to see Round Valley slow it down. You've already kind of seen them do that. Slowed it down, work it out front. They, what they'll look to do is they'll have to make them come out of their zone and match up. Otherwise, they can just hold it at half court. Ada Mortensen back into the ballgame for the Elks. Got Second one's made. 14-point ball game. 316. Here we go. McCall to Mortensen on a little bit of wild pass. Oh. Yeah, they're definitely slowing things down. <laughs> and gets it. No foul. Wow. Was that just opportunistic? Is that why we saw him push the way that they did? Yeah, that was just well, she reacting got the to the, came in, yeah, I mean, reacting to the press. You're not going to tell them to, if you have a layup, don't shoot the layup. Don't do it. Take what the opposing team gives you, but don't force it unnecessarily on the offensive end. Aguilar back to the line. Logan's first of the night. I, I'm going to be interested. Like, I almost want to have a – if you're watching in the comments, how many – what is the total team fouls going to be? What is the total fouls on both teams at the end of the game? And we'll tally it up and see who gets the closest. Price of right rules without going over. <laughs> I mean, how else would you do it? Yeah. Haas with the ball. Haas to Logan. Again, we're looking in the comments for you to let us know how many total fouls called tonight. We're going to go off of Cass's book. Walker kicks it to the right side to Logan, Ooh. who tries to find Haas. Aguilar gets it. Aguilar gets two points with pressure. There was a hand on the ball and everything. Smart play, though. They didn't get too aggressive. You know, you don't want to give them an and-one opportunity right there. You got five. 
Subs coming in. Areola coming back in. And number two, Cortez coming into the game for the Wildcats. 14-point ball game, 224. Like you said, Cass, very doable still. This, this isn't done by any means. <laughs> Solid advice. <laughs> yes. Foul. Solid advice. 13 with a three. All ball from Walker. Walker going to get the rebound. There's pressure. He traveled. Traveled. Yep. Yep. Switch those pivot feet. Yep. Anticipated the contact. Yep, you can see it right there. Here we come back into the game. Don't foul again. 2.14 left in the, on the clock. 14-point ball game. Long pass to number two, Cortez. Cortez gets it to number 23, Cortez. Oh, nope, they're going to call it for a foul. That's her fifth, isn't it? Mortensen's? Uh, Mortensen. I believe so. 22. Yes, that yep. is five. And they're, they're, they're confirming that at the scorer's table. Mortensen will come out of the ball game with 2.10 left. 14-point spread. And we see uh, Young coming back in. Now Young's in foul trouble as well. Doesn't she have three or four? She's four. got four. Just cycling through them at this point. Right. Two minutes left. First one drops. 13 point ball game. Throwing that mask, get rid of it. Kids got so used to wearing them and yeah. having them. Second shot is up and good. 12 point ball game. A game of free throws. Make, or Young with it. Emma Young. That's her fifth. Is Aguilar finally getting her fifth? Yeah. She did. You know, my hat's off to her for how well she played and how long she stayed in the game, drawing those three quick ones straight away. Young's going to go to the line, shooting two. I like number 13, Ontiveros, her shoes. Look at him. Kinda, yes. Kind of yeah. got a little bit, bit of it. I've seen the yellow ones all night. I've seen Cortez's all night, but I hadn't seen those yet. Yeah. 12 coming into the game. Sylvester coming in for um, Aguilar. I did a, a football game with Clancy one time, and that was the most commentary he did was, you know, those are the 2016 Adidas blah, blah, blah cleats right there. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. It's what he does, though. Plays a lot of soccer still with his friends down in the valley. A lot of club, a lot of small ball, or a lot of small um, field. Young with her free throw. It's now a 14-point um, ball game. Oh, nice hands there. By Areola, no yeah. foul. McCall with it. McCall off to the races. Here we go for two. She does a great job of gearing down with that last step. And she can do it on both sides yeah. of, the, of the hoop, too. I've yes. seen her do it left-handed. She goes full speed to three-quarter speed on, in one step, and so she doesn't overrun that uh, layup. Three offensive, or two offensive rebounds, three attempts there for Marinci, none of them dropping. Ariola bringing the ball down. 92 seconds left in the ballgame. Young opts not to take the shot. You can see Round Valley definitely pumping the brakes a little bit here. Pulling it out, and as you'll see, Marenzi's there having to either get out or Round Valley can just keep passing it around. See, that would probably be a situation where you're like, it's a minute left, you didn't need to shoot that shot, maybe pull it out. I thought she was going to turn around and pass it out again yeah. as well. So you have a layup. Number two, drawing the foul, Cortez. I believe we're going to see Walker going to the line. That's waiting for the board to update. Who did they call that? Two, out? her first. Yeah, her first. Sorry. Number 32, Walker coming into the game. Tay Lynn. I believe this is Tay Lynn's first opportunity into the game tonight. Yes. Because Haas is going to finally get a break, maybe. Have we seen all the Lady Elks on the court tonight? No. No. I don't think I've seen Muth on the court this evening. Is there any other Elks that we haven't seen yes, play? Yes. Uh, MK. MK Hunt as well. Yep. Okay. Young coming out. Haw's not getting a break. Also, Sodaquist hasn't come in. That's right. Correct. Sixteen-point game. One o four left in the ball game. Walker with the free throw. Trying 
travel. A little yeah. travel action. So Cass, if we were gonna try to snag a couple of the Round Valley Elks, who would you talk to tonight? Who do you really feel has dialed it in and, and brought the victory for the Round Valley Oaks this evening? Um, I would definitely say Carly Haas has stepped in, also Logan and McCall. Yep. 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 Walker's going to go to the line, 47.6 seconds left. I would concur with those choices. Yeah, Haas, Logan, and McCall have all had great games tonight. We'll see what we can do once the game gets over. 47.6 seconds left, 17-point ball game. Walker drains it, 18 points. So St. John's it is. St. John's Saturday night at 7 p.m. Steal by Ariola to finish it. Ariola with a nice shot, making it a 20-point ball game with 36 seconds left. <laughs> This has been your fourth quarter coverage brought to you by Molly Butler Lodge where you can get fruits of the forest pie. Not as good as the- Oh, don't mud pie me. Mud pie, I had that last Friday for my birthday. So. Oh man. We had this conversation with, uh, now her name escaped me. Uh, but. It was very memorable apparently. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the manager's name? Sandy. 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 Yeah. yeah we talked about you liking fruits of the forest tonight, me liking mud pie. Uh, yeah. Mud pie all the way, folks. Guys, it's going to end in an 18 point spread. Your Round Valley Lady Elks winning against the Marinci Wildcats, 61 to 43. A huge thanks for Marinci for coming down and joining us. Coming up, actually, I guess they're a little south of us. So be safe on that drive home as you travel through, through Mule Creek. That's a drive that I've taken a number of times. And so a huge thanks to Marinci for coming. If you're watching, I hope you guys have a, an excellent week and an excellent Thursday. And we, oh, so let's take a look right now. How many total fouls right now? Closest without going over. Closest without going over. Taking a look right now. Shane, you were close, but Lori, you're closer. 55 total <laughs> fouls tonight. All right, I'm going to see if I can grab a couple of the girls right now. So, Cass, you guys take us into post-game coverage, and I'll be right back. Great. Well, definitely R Round Valley Elks just said they were able to maintain and control the end of the game there and, and do what they needed to to, to be successful. Uh, a lot of contributing factors was that they were able to pass the pass the ball, control the ball, and, and you saw the first half they were a little out of control and that made it a lot closer, but in the second half Round Valley was able to control the pressure that Marinci put on and they were able to capitalize on some of those turnovers that they created. Yeah. And that makes huge differences and they're able to score points there. Yeah, very similar to the last game, you know, uh, kept it close through halftime and then Round Valley opened it up in the second half. It's kind of been the MO with Round Valley uh, Marinci games all but, year. But a different second quarter. The Lady Elks yes. we typically see in a drought from scoring in the second or third quarter and that didn't happen. Yeah. They did. I mean, it was a lot tighter of a game than I think we wanted it to be because they had, what, a nine-point spread, ended with a three-point. Right. Yeah. But if they had gone, if they would have had that lull, I think it would have been fatal tonight. You know, uh, I, I don't know if we'd have been able to recover in this game if we'd have had that two-point quarter or whatever. That would have been a tough pull to come out of. Right, and, and that fourth quarter was huge for Round Valley. Yes. They came out, hit, hit hit a couple of threes. They most made most of their free throws. They only missed one free throw, or two free throws that quarter, and it, it just they they scored about 20 points that quarter. How many total free throws for the Marinci Wildcats? I I just am, am impressed by their their shots from the line tonight. I'd like to thank Round Valley Tiny Village for bringing the post-game coverage here. We're hoping to get a couple of the girls up here for an interview. We'll stay with you for a few minutes. Hope that you stay with us. Saturday, 7 p.m. in St. John's, the Round Valley Lady Elks will face off against the St. John's Redskins. Stephen, how has it been Round Valley versus St. John's girls leading up to this point in the playoffs? Uh, 
it's interesting they have the higher seed they have the higher seed but we beat them twice you know uh, 28 I think the first game is 28 26 and that was a game where we had a huge drought in the late first quarter second quarter and it held on they missed a three-pointer at the buzzard that would have beat us and then down in st. John same type of game but not the drought but uh we beat them I think 48 46 or 51 49 again they rallied in the fourth quarter we were up eight early in the fourth quarter st. John's rallied had a couple of chances to take the lead we held them off and were able to hold on and win it so I expect a good game biter man. great game coming in on Saturday well guys stick with us on the Facebook page we'll let you know if we're able to put a, a crew together to go down and cover the game we haven't even talked about it up to this point it's been so many streams, so much craziness, so much basketball. So let me talk to the crew here after we get the stream done this evening. Um, while we're waiting for the interviews, please hit that subscribe button on our on our socials, especially on the YouTube channel. We're bringing it to you tonight on Facebook Live and on YouTube. We're working towards our next milestone with YouTube so that they'll unlock some more tools for us. And so do us a favor, hit that red subscribe button and then ding the bell. And if you're watching on your phone, just rotate your phone and it'll be right there underneath. And if it's grayed out, you've already done it. And when we get to 500, our next hope is we're going to do some giveaways when we get to 500 subscribers. And so hit that subscribe button just like you see on the screen. Ring the bell, and you'll know when we go live next time. When we do more than one stream at a time, it's hard to schedule and prep the streams where you know ahead of time with a link. So you'll know that way whenever we go live for a broadcast. So exciting, yeah. exciting game. Yeah, 55 well, fouls. 50, 50, well, <laughs> 50, 50, 55 fouls. Their uh, free throws, you had 64 free throws taught Mer or shot. Marenzi was 22 for 39, round values 12 for 25. You know, I mean, that's, that's a lot of free throws in a game. And as you saw, I mean, even looking at time, this game lasted an hour and 45 minutes where normally g normal games are about an hour and 15 minutes. Right. And, you know, and it, it just got extended because of all the foul situations. And, and what that tells me is they're both playing aggressive. They were both getting at it. And you saw from the very beginning of the game, Marenzi was in Round Valley's face, and Round Valley responded right back with, you know, playing the exact same, with the same intensity. And we talked, the refs let it go for the first quarter or so. And then they tried pulling it back because they said, this, this is getting a little bit too out of control. And as they did that, you know, you saw a lot, lot more fouls because the players had already adjusted to what the refs were calling. And when they weren't calling much, they were playing harder and aggress more aggressive. So so do you think it would have been, a, I mean, both teams very aggressive from the get-go, just like you said. Do you think it would have been a difference? Do you think that the referees were letting them play a little too much? Or do you think that was going to be the game regardless of the officiating situation? Could it have been different? Or was that just is that the aggressive game we were going to have no I, matter the the officials on the floor i, I kind of think that's the game you're going to have it probably wouldn't have been as many fouls if they would have been able to control it from the very beginning because you know from the beginning you knew Marenzi was going to leave it all on the court and as a result of it i mean it they did and they had all these girls foul out which gave their all i mean and and you can't ask for any anything more they 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 really did well and and I, I don't know, I, 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 saw, I saw them a, di a more intense game from Marenzi this game than, mm -hmm. than the last game when we, when we played them. And th they were in the running, and, and they, they had opportunities. Just the foul sh fouls and, and the turnovers ended up costing them in the end. Well, once we get to the playoffs, it's just like you said, you have to leave everything on the court because there is no tomorrow, especially for the seniors. Um, one of the girls that we were interviewing that you got to watch at halftime said you never know when your last game is. Could be injury, could be corona. You never know, but to leave it on the court because you never know when your last game is. And I think you'll, I think we said it a few times, that's what the Marinci coach was telling his girls throughout the night, is this is it. It's all or nothing. Give it all. What do you got, Stephen? We got them coming up? It yeah, the like, three right there. Looks like they're walking away. All right, guys. Well, I, I signaled them to come up. I don't know if they're going to. Uh, I think that they're, they're walking away. They don't want to. They saw us and said, let's just keep going. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> they may be going to go up underneath and come up. Give them a moment. They may give be coming up those stairs. We'll, we'll yeah. give them just a second, see what we yeah. can do. Um, Darren, we're glad you joined us. We're glad that you watched the stream with us. We appreciate 
all the support that, that Trail Riders gives and the support that you give to the community coaching the softball girls, and so thank you. Um, Lee, this is um, Kyrie's uncle's wanting us to get Kyrie on camera so he can embarrass the crap out of her. He's in Tucson <laughs> and is wanting to. Lori Holland with a shout out. We've got Janelle Pena. I don't know who that is, but she's one. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. She, she kind of <laughs> loves – somebody loves Round Valley Elks, Lady Elk basketball. I know that. So hang with us, guys. We're glad you're sticking with us. Give us just a minute. We think the girls are headed up right now. You're watching post-game coverage of Round Valley Elks playoffs brought to you by Round Valley Tiny Village. So stick with us for just a second, and we'll be yep, right there. there. Oh, here we go. we got two of them coming right now. So I will I will sacrifice my headset for, right the, on. for the interviewer. I, 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 w I can too. Okay, whatever. You guys know much more about this game. I should be the one that steps out. Yeah, but you're the one with the word, the man with the words. With words? I don't know if they're the right words. I'm going to start asking them football questions here. Well, so. well, we'll share things that you can ask. Yes, here we go. Actually, let's, let's do this really quick. Um, let's grab Steven. Will you untape that microphone right there, and we can just get them... The other microphone, we'll be able to chat. So, guys, hang on just a sec. We're getting the girls lined up. Girls, why don't? I'm starting to think, Ethan, how's this going to show up the best? Because we're super professional. All right. Let me take a look here. And let's see, I want that to go away like that. All right, we got this microphone, so let's do this. So, Stephen, Cass, you guys can get your, your headsets back on. Girls, go ahead and join us right here if you'd like. Yeah. Just anywhere right here, and you guys can share the mic, and I'll step back just a little bit. See if we can frame everybody up in the shot. Hey, I think we've got it. All right, we're going to switch over right now. Um, I, I don't know how this works. Do you guys know how this works? Do you guys know what's going on? I wish I knew what was going on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're joined by a couple of the Round Valley Lady Elks. Um, ladies, if you would, let us know what you're feeling. First round of the playoffs against the Marincy Wildcats. How did it go? Was it, <clears throat> was it as expected? Did they come at you a little differently than what you planned? What happened? Oh, you might want to also introduce yourself because I'm really good at this. Oh. I'm Carly Haas. Um, they definitely came out a lot harder than last time we played them. I feel like during the game, every time they scored, it was like, oh, shoot, we got to get up. We got we to gotta match that. We got to we gotta go hard, you know, just as hard. And then I look up at the scoreboard, and I'm like, oh, like, it's okay. Like, we can kind of chill. But it was not a chill game at all. I feel like we were just running and trying to um, steal the ball. Or It was just a very intense game. Well, and to that point, you were down the majority of the first quarter. I think it wasn't until the very end of the first quarter that you took the lead 7-8, to eight, I think, at that yes, point. back and forth most of the quarter. Well, and it was evident that they came out strong and, and attacked you right from the beginning. And last time we played them, they weren't playing that aggressive. And we saw some of your your uh, aggressiveness and anger as you were pulling, Carly, as you were pulling down rebounds. And they were right there. It was, it was great to see. Uh, what, one, one of the questions I would ask is, a, as, you, as you were putting pressure on them, what, what were your thoughts when you were getting or able to steal the ball? What? Because you had a lot of steals. There were tons of steals in that game. Was it just the intensity of the game both ways? Because it just seems like it was high energy all over the place. And the, the pedal really didn't come off the gas until, what, sometime into the third quarter no. that we saw things back and, off just a little bit. And we saw a lot of your long touchdown passes. That's right. Coast-to-coast yeah. -coast assists, right? Those are definitely what helps ease the game off. Like, okay, we got easy two points. Okay, we've got to stop them now. So. Yeah. Did uh, what changes do you guys, did you guys make coming in? Uh, me and Coach Pond noticed you came out in a two-three. Where typically you guys start in a man, don't you? Um, well, where you're in two-three early. Two, three, and then our press guy too. Okay. But that's what we usually do better. In. All right. So the question that we asked the crowd that was on that was on Facebook: How many total fouls do you think were called this evening? Both teams. It almost did, actually. It almost did, because it's 9 o'clock right now. How, yeah, I was even talking to 
talking to some of the girls like on the other team like at the free throw I'm like I feel like we've been here like the free throw line longer than like down up and down the court because holy crap this is foul after foul like little dumb ones that like you know it just then some strong ones they wouldn't call but then they'd call the little touch foul yeah Yeah. Yeah. 55 55 total fouls for both teams (laughs) 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 well when you have three three team players on both teams fouling out (laughs) <laughs> that, that yeah, I don't think I've seen that many tick marks on, on the, the board before. It was just all over the place. You know what was really impressive is who on the Marinci team really impressed you? For me, it was number 23 with her free throw ability. I mean, oh, she yeah. was – what did she end good. up? She all was – we're so good at free throws. Yeah, so. a lot. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's they, what kept them in the game. Yeah, yeah. Sure. they slowed down in the second half. They were 22 of 39. But early on, they were like 10 for 12. Well, early in the game. They were at least like half their points with free throws when yeah. they kept fouling. But yeah, I number 10, she definitely worked hard. She was a hard worker. That's who was on me most of the time. And she's a hard worker. And she, I knew that it was going to be harder because like in the first game when we first played them, she was definitely one of the better players that I had to watch out for as a post. So, so what was the turning point for you? When do you feel like you ladies got control of the game? And, and took the momentum and ran with it? Because it feels like once you got that, it was close for a while, and then you pulled away. What was that moment for you? I feel like when, like, we do something, like, really good, like, as a team, then we kind of get, like, hyped, and then we kind of realize, like, we need to settle down a little bit. So that really gets us settled down. And then just we today, like, we really talked on the court a lot, and, like, I think that helped us to know, like, where we should be and I think that's what helps settle, settle settle us down. Well, I think one of the things that was super impressive to the, that I got that we watched, that we even commented on, it, is how well you're able to be super energetic until you go for in for the layup, and how much you can turn that down yeah. and be able to score. And so I think what you were saying is exactly what we saw you do, layup after layup, being able really to shut it down left and right side of the basket, which was super fun to watch. Yeah, a lot of a lot of players, boys and girls, that will go too fast and they won't be able to control their momentum too hard off the back, but you do a great job of gearing down with that last step to keep the ball under control. It's definitely one of the funnest t- things for me is just to throw it and I'm like, oh, shout out my I can stay down here for a little bit, you know, I mean, take a break. It's passes. so great. Yeah. I would just love it. Okay, Laura, there's one, or Laura, Kayla, okay. uh, there's one <laughs> second time I've done that where there's a steal here and you're wide open under the basket. They threw it to you. And you turned around, and you were a little bit too far under the basket, yeah. you, and you, but you were able to convert it. I just we were laughing because you're like, "Whoa, what too close!" Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. finished. No, but that and that's an extremely hard shot. I yeah. think that shot and the shot from behind the basket are the two hardest shots that you can shoot, and you you executed them really well. So, right, uh, a turning point I felt like was when Shiloh hit those two threes. They yeah. just kind of eased it. It was a six point, just like that. We had six points, and it just kind of like. Okay, now we're up 14. Yep. It still felt like, like they were like neck and neck with yeah. us. I don't know why it was. They're just high intense. They didn't ever, ever yeah. let down. Yeah. It's yeah. Like maybe fighting. like in the fourth quarter, like late, but like they just kept like, I don't know, made it feel like we were so <laughs> yep. close in the well, game. The well, and, time. and more than once, they would go on a five point hit really quick yeah. and they would bring it in. Even if it was 15, 16, and all of a sudden it was 11 point spread, mm-hmm. they did a good job at doing that. And mm-hmm. You had to gather yourself again, slow down, just like Shiloh said, Shiloh said, and get things going again in your favor. And so, um, anything else? Any surprises? Favorite part of the game? Anything else that you guys want to to shout out as we as we wrap things up here tonight? One step closer. Boom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What are any our thoughts? Started? Yeah. Any yeah thoughts about <laughs> Saturday? St. John's. John's did win it tonight, so yeah, you are going to. Go play. Yeah. Won by a very large spread. About yeah. about like the game was was this evening. Their game was over a lot quicker. I think the entire stream was like an hour sixteen minutes, and so <laughs> slightly didn't shorter have as game. Many fouls. And, and <laughs> no. they, they uh, looked like they mercy ruled them. Looked like they had a running clock in the fourth quarter. Uh, Correct. So yeah, I think it's gonna be a really good game just because we both want it. Yeah. And we're both rivalries, so I think it'll. A little bit of that going on. It's gonna be loud. It's yes. going to be very loud, though. It's yes. be fun. Yeah. I have a pick who I think is going to win, but I'm going to keep it secret. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, girls, how has that been? Because we really haven't got to talk a lot to the athletes specifically. Is tell us the difference. No fans, now with fans. Tell, what is the difference in the gameplay for you? Is it night and day? It, yeah, because it's weird because, like, you'd shoot a shot and then, like, 
Okay. It's your Woo. team. It's your team. Okay, it's over. You <laughs> know, it's so weird. It's so different. It's so glad. I'm so glad, like, the boys were here to, like, cheer us on in the student section. Singing the goofiest songs. We, yeah. we loved it. <laughs> and, like, saying the funniest pickup lines. Like, it's just, yeah. it's just a good time. Like, I laugh on the floor. I'm like, oh, shoot. See, we couldn't hear the pickup lines. We did hear, if you're happy to know it, clap oh, your hands. Yeah, you heard that. Hilarious. The hokey pokey, everything that was going on. Did they sing happy birthday to Riley? Riley? Is that no, what they did? Yeah. 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 Well, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> in a way. <laughs> in a way oh, yeah. Shout out to Riley. Happy birthday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so to wrap things up, any shout outs that you want to give to friends, family, somebody that might be watching the live stream tonight? Just everybody. I like love like all the support of everybody, like not just in our town, but like just everybody watching, and it's just a great the support for everybody. So. Well, ladies, congratulations on the win. Go get some rest. Go have a great day of school tomorrow, and we'll see you in St. John's <laughs> on Saturday. All right. Yes. Thank you. Good Thank luck. You so Take Thank it you. to them. Good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, that was Haas, McCall, and Logan, three of the players that we really felt like. Kept it going. On did we ever see Haas off the court? No. Did never have a break. Yeah. She 32 minutes. Full. Why? We Ethan's waving at us. I'm not sure. Where, is that Ryan? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> oh, so much, guys. It's past my bedtime. I'll tell you that right now. Um, Cass, thank you as always. Thank Steven, you. I appreciate thank for you. the opportunity. Ethan, always we got good. Dan. Another amazing night of Let's Go Elks basketball. A huge thanks to all of our supporters and the, the sponsor family that we have. Guys, until next time, you're watching Let's Go Elks. Have a great night. Make good choices. Right.